2004 that showed there was infectious salmonini in some fish that were tested. And it looked asymptomatic. I mean, it wasn't causing the virus, but uh, it looked like maybe a benign form of virus that was occurring in some of these. And DFO knew about this, and they suppressed this paper because they didn't. They, they claimed in testimony they didn't think the analysis was proper. And uh, Cohen uh, lawyer said, "Well, didn't you think it was germane to the hearings?" No, because we didn't think that the analysis was proper. Right. So uh, this was the kind of stuff that was going back and forth. But Christy Miller then uh, did a briefing note that we uncovered again through this Freedom of Information, uh, you know, this, this, sorry, this this uh, information disclosure process where she actually, uh, as a DFO scientist, did identify positive ISA fish around, around, around farm fish that looked at that and basically picked up uh, similar levels in, in uh, wild migrating soccer. These fish are responding in an influenza-like response to this virus and they did find farm fish positive for this virus, which is thought to be causing carbon skeletal muscular information in this muscular uh, inflammation in this case. But Christy Miller uh, and these other two labs that tested fish that Alex and Rick sent in all found ISA virus, but the reference lab for DFO in Moncton did not. So then there was this huge battle on whose test was proper and, and the DFO's test was just outside of the norm in terms of what they were testing and it wasn't picking up the virus. Uh, so just some of the results from the Miller lab, she found the ISA in, in uh, fish going all the way back to 85 in the Fraser River. So it could have been here for quite a while. We're still trying to figure out whether it's a European strain or, or some kind of a variant strain in, in, uh, in the Pacific, and that's still coming. Uh, apparently some is being cultured right now, so we should know for too long. But uh, there's all this back and forth. Uh, with That's Progressive Island, uh, UPEI does a test. When he announced these results, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency was immediately in his lab auditing auditing him and intimidating him. And he came to the stand and said, yeah, I felt intimidated. Christy Miller said, I felt intimidated. I felt my money was going to be cut off by reporting these results. Uh, but they, the, the questions about, were about the test. And uh, Dr. Miller said she's not aware of the test that, uh, that DFO is using to be uh, the standard test that is being used around the world. So all this kind of stuff came out. You know, these are the people guarding our fish, right? They're saying, oh, no, 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 calm down. There's nothing happening here. But three independent labs and one DFO scientist in this coast saying, wait a minute, there's something out there. So we also find that government is out to protect their own backsides all the time. Any food inspection agency, we got these memos. This Joseph Beer is pretty, uh, pretty uh, chipper one day. He said, it's clear that we're turning the, the PR tie to our favorites because of the successful performance of our spokes at the tech briefing yesterday. Congratulations. One battle is won. Now we have to nail the surveillance pieces. We'll win the war also. I don't think Cohen appreciated this kind of cheerleading uh, uh, about trying to control information and, and, and public relations wars. You know, he's worried about the fish and, and the findings of the fish. <coughs> so we're hearing from the inspectors that they think it's a public relations battle. Uh, the inspectors from Canadian Food Inspection Agency said their main concern was international trade. And if we declare that there's ISA in British Columbia, it's going to affect international trade in Canadian wild and farm fish. And that was their concern. They were really upfront about that. The people were just booing from the audience and had to be hushed in that this kind of stuff. Came out. But this is one of the sort of the stuff that was revealed. The whole disease issue was just opened up at the Gulf of Prairie. But we found you know, farms that were uh, Chinook farms, early Chinook farms in the Strait of Georgia that had 70% mortality from viruses on those farms, right? We're seeing problems in Fraser Chinook now. I'm just saying, you know, there's, there's problems out there in the past with viruses in Chinook and farm fish, and we may see some residual problems still happening there right now. So I think we can just address, you know, the impacts. We can pray that Cohen doesn't make a difference. I don't know. With this government going and watering down the Fisheries Act and, and uh, everything else that's going on right now, I don't know. But we have a federal inquiry. We have it still coming out. It's going to be hard for Harper to ignore. It's not going to be we can't ignore it. We need to resolve this conflict of interest in DFO. We recommended that aquaculture and wild salmon be separated out of DFO. And so did several other groups. Never happened, probably. But we made that recommendation. There's such a conflicted mandate. Two auditor generals also commented in the past on the conflicted mandate of DFO. 
we need to discover what's going to stop it. It's probably lots of things, but I think the virus issue has risen to the top as one of the major concerns on, on this, but climate change and, and uh, some of these other issues are, are a problem as well. We need to get serious about this disease. We had a disease workshop with SFU. The main finding was you need to be independent verification of government disease surveillance because nobody believes what the government's reporting anymore. So uh, we'll see how that works out. And we need to, for salmon farming, accelerate the transition. Not just First Nation. They're, gonna, they're building a closed containment salmon farm by Alert Bay right now. It can be done. It can be done economically. It can be done sustainably. It can be done sensibly. And we're seeing more people look towards that. But, you know, the salmon farmers don't want to move these out of the salt water because the sea does a great job of taking care of the poop and, you know, and everything else. So why have to deal with all that stuff? And we need to buy some time for wild salmon. So we're continuing to work on this issue. <clears throat> we did a, a, a daily report during the aquaculture hearings on all the testimony. We're stitching it all together now and uh, we're going to present a, a more substantial analysis. There's a Cohen website and uh, we did uh, salmon leaks as well. So that's a real, real, real short, it may be seen too long for most of you, but short snapshot of what we had to do for 18 months at the Cohen inquiry, a lot of different subjects. Uh, they cover just about anything that could affect fish, as I said. But uh, will you explain that? Yeah, and uh, if anybody wants to be on our newsletter for any future uh, stuff on the Cohen inquiry, and please, I know some people get so many different things. Electronic newsletter, don't feel obligated. You can give a sign up sheet and just give it back to Frank sometime and give it to us. But we do a new newsletter about four times a year, <coughs> and we'll be saying a lot more about the Cohen inquiry uh, as we go down down the road. So. That's kind of some of the stuff that happened. I missed a lot, and uh, uh, I appreciate your attention. So, if you have any questions? Uh, Do you think that this would have on uh, commercial fishery for export? Was that all brought? I mean, do you think that the government would be right behind the truth about this stuff to protect the commercial aspect of export? Of Sam. No, I'm, I'm getting quite cynical in my old age, but again, I think the government's only caring about farm sand. You produce them year-round, you know, they, they have this notion of still causing, you know, helping employment. I think it's only 4,000 people employed in sand farming. Uh, commercial fishery is messy. Those guys scream all the time. They demand this. They fight with the sport fishermen. They fight with the, you know, well, I don't want that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think that there's a lot of support for commercial fishermen there, and a lot of commercial fishermen didn't think there was a lot of support for but would it be even the farm fish? Well, that's right. SEPA doesn't want to report the ISA virus because it's a reportable disease. It has to be, if it's, if it's found, it has to be reported to the World Health Organization, and that will potentially affect exports from the BC. So it's best for them not to, you know, to deny you know, the scam, wield uncertainty to maintain the status quo. Uh, okay, we've got this coming out in June, right? And I'm as skeptical as you are. I'm saying to myself, oh, you know, those assholes are going to kick us in the butt again and so on. And it's going to be just as, as you see, all of that information that should be in that report is not going to be there. Did you have, or was there at all of these meetings, was there reporters, <coughs> other reporters, or, or people from media people that were trying to have a, a, a positive impact on everything uh, so that, you know, like, when this report comes out, that they can bloody well say, well, hey, this is what was at all the meetings. There was one reporter there that stayed through the whole thing and reported on it. That was Mark Keaton, the global man. He used to be a Vancouver Sun reporter. The Sun was totally disinterested, except during the aquaculture games, and they sent a couple of reporters down. Uh, you got the, some of the Fraser Valley reporters uh, were, were there, and they, you can see some of their reports on, on a fairly regular basis. They were probably the second most common reporters I saw there. But the immediate disinterest in the whole Cohen inquiry was staggering. And uh, except for Mark Hume, and we do know that Mark Hume has some shit for uh, his very blunt reporting on, on what was going on. He reported on all the UFO gaps, and uh, he's not reporting on any of them right now, by the way. So he's been. Uh, I'm not saying that. Is it remote? Yeah. I'm not saying that, but the, the media disinterest was quite disheartening. We did lots of interviews. 
I did lots of radio interviews and, and stuff, but the Sun was just missing in action. Vancouver Sun. Providence, I never saw Providence report. <coughs> All of that information is available, right? Everything that came out of there. All reports, there were transcripts of every day's testimony. And those are still available. If you really want to purchase a so, lot uh, you know, like, I don't have the education. We're doing, we're doing some summaries. That's why we were trying to summarize some of this stuff. And, uh, I don't have the educational background to do that. So I'm oh, wait, we're, we're, we're we're fighting those summaries. Yeah. If there is somebody out there or whatever that uh, has got the balls and, uh, to go through absolutely everything, and when that report comes out, yeah. be able to refute what has been said. We'll be on the report, and, and there'll be lots of groups on the report when it comes out. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Any more questions? Is everybody totally depressed? <laughs> I mean, you know, look, it was it was a it was a depressing experience in, in some ways, but the information that was revealed, uh, we've never seen it in any other way. And uh, you know, that was really good to get that out there. We have a much better indication of just how insidious uh, the situation is. So do you think that the enclosed areas will be taking over? Closed areas? Closed, closed containment. Salmon. Oh, containment. yeah, there's still a lot of resistance to that. But we're seeing, and we're seeing an interest in it. Uh, I work quite closely with uh, the Thai Talk Culture Innovation Fund, which funds these, these projects. The Moore Foundation put $7 million in closed containment technology in British Columbia. So we're, we're going to see some of it. And, uh, but, you know, the market has to shift. We need to get premiums for these kind of salmon. And, and, uh, but I think there's still going to be a, a hell of a lot of resistance uh, to changing the industry. Or I think they want to expand it. Right now. Okay, go ahead. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Craig, we would uh, like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. Yeah. The pleasure of his company, the fishing diaries of Jack Shaw. I'm sure you've heard of him before. I know Jack, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much again. And, uh, hey, we'll let you carry on with your business. That was really... Thank you. <laughs>